Hello people, uh, welcome to more Lux Ogi webinar. My name is Andre, it's a board member, uh, board member of the Lux Ogi. Uh, today uh, we have the webinar about the uh, understand ZGLRA uh, zero data loss uh, appliance. Uh, now I will show the the presentation about the group. Uh, our group was created in May uh, this year in Luxembourg. In seven months, our numbers are 83 uh, uh, user register. The total the published articles uh, 55 and viral topicals, uh, cloud, exadata, database, and automation and the others. Today it's about uh, engineer systems. Um, total of page views in this uh, 10,000 10, page views and more than 4,000 visits during this period. Okay. And our board members, uh, me, Andrea Ontalba, uh, Carlos Magno is another, <coughs> Fernando Simons is a speaker today. Leonardo Lopes and uh, Rodrigo Mufalani. Okay, uh, well, now I turn to our speakers, Fernando Simon, and uh, enjoy this webinar. Okay, uh, Fernando? Fernando, is it's okay? It's okay, yes. Okay. It's possible to start now. Yes, we can start right now. So, uh, today uh, we I will present uh, one webinar about uh, zero data loss. The idea is to show uh, how to understand and what we can do with zero data loss. Okay. Uh, uh, the disclaimer for this uh, webinar, because we are doing this to hold the Luxembourg Oracle user group. So uh, the postings for this document are for my own and don't necessarily represent my actual employer positions, strategies, or options. So the information here was edited to be useful for general purpose and does not identify users or something uh, like that. So the agenda for this webinar is a little presentation for myself. Uh, uh, some uh, ideas about uh, what is backup, what is your data loss, how you uh, enroll in the database, protect the database, how the replicated backup and tapes work, and some internal details. Uh, this webinar, since we are a uh, user, uh, our official user group, is part of a uh, Oracle Ace program. So it is more than 400 and a half uh, technical experts. Then exist the Oracle Ace Director, Oracle Ace, and Oracle Associate. If you want to be part, uh, you can go to the Oracle Ace program or do uh, nominate yourself, or if you want to nominate your friend or someone else, you can do that. So, about me. I'm a senior DBA at Eperseed Luxembourg. Eperseed is my actual employer. I'm OCA, OCP, and OCE hack, and I'm board member for Lux Oracle User Group. My contacts are there, my email, my personal blog that I sustained since 2010, uh, my Twitter, and my LinkedIn. If you want to con connect, feel free to connect and be there to follow the posts and my ideas. Uh, uh, so I'm DBA since 2004. I work with Oracle, Postgres, SQL, DB2, SQL Server. I started as consulting. I have a Oracle blog since 2010. I already made a 
presentation in Oracle Open World in San Francisco, Oracle Open World Latin America, mo Latin America more than one time, and uh, some presentations for Brazil York User Group. I worked for seven years as DBA team manager in Court of Justice. Uh, there I worked with Exadata V2, who was the third one in Brazil and the first OLTP. Uh, we go a little and we had a Exadata X2 after a full X4 and full X5 and after a X6. It's a high consolidated environment. We use it IORM, resource manager, instance caging to control everything. In 2014, in 2015, we brought two zero data loss, uh, was the first in Brazil, and uh, one of the first of the world to be replicated. So we use it uh, zero data loss. I use it zero data loss, uh, exadata. So basically, it's a MAA project, multi site protection, hack plus hack, data guard, zero data loss. Everything was integrated. And you can see the presentation that I made in. Uncle San Francisco in this link. In 2017, I moved to Luxembourg, uh, Europe. Uh, in the proceed, I worked for a European institution, do a normal uh, DBA lifecycle man man management, support production, patch, and whenever. Uh, after that, I changed it a little to another consulting. Inside of bank institution with multi-site environment, DEXA data, zero data laws, and almost the same that I made in Brazil. And uh, with our colleagues, uh, Rodrigo, and uh, Leonardo, and Carlos, we started the Lux Oracle User Group, and I'm born the member for that. So, the idea from backup. The backups started uh, around uh, since we know, uh, but uh, it starts with tape libraries, direct copy to tape. So it's almost like that. After a network attached storage, and came a virtual tape libraries. In 2000, it started with the, the duplication uh, and some ideas about that. And in the beginning of this, Decade and a half, whenever. We start with backup appliance, and we have some examples like data domain that integrate everything, integrate tapes, uh, network attached, uh, virtual tapes. We have Convolt and zero data loss in this case. And recently, I can say that uh, we can do backup, we can make the backups in cloud or copy to cloud, clone to cloud. So we have the cloud in this, this idea. Uh, but the idea for the goals and principles for the backup is restore every information. Uh, you don't have at least the minimal impact over the environment. Uh, it's supposed to be easy to operate, control, and verify. Uh, we can uh, sustain uh, data uh, retention and storage to sustain your, uh, some laws that we need to follow, regulations, requirements. So we need to have space. It need, needs to be easy. This is the idea and the principles that we need to follow. But sometimes uh, it's difficult because in the real life, we have usually data loss because it seems the last backup. So we lost some minutes, some hours, some days, whatever. We have high impact over the environment because the you copy uh, a lot of data, terabytes of data, gigabytes of data, and your environments are have uh, use a lot of I.O. and you are putting more I.O. So you need to learn about a lot of players, Tivoli, EMC, Data Protector, Convolt, and uh, you need to learn this. Sometimes you don't have more than one at the same time. Now we have cloud, and uh, 
backup is just one part because you have the restore. So you to be safe or to be reliable, you need to validation, you need to test validation again, test again, validation again, and testing forever because every backup needs to 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 be possible to be restored. But this can be worst because what happens usually? We have the backup server, so we send the backups there. So we have our databases. And we send the backup from data files and archive logs. Okay, this is nice. You have one vendor, but your system can be bigger. You can have some, can have some extra data or whatever, more databases, and you say send backup from data files to there. But you have file servers because uh, it's a huge environment, not a huge environment, but you can you need to share these with file servers. So. Your backup environment is not just for you, it's for the enterprise. So you need to share tape, share space, share the bandwidth to do the backups. Uh, another option you can do is snapshot from uh, storage, but whenever. Uh, you need cloud control, or you can do by cloud tab whenever, but you need to take care because if your cloud tab is not working, you need to take care. If your control, cloud control is not working, you need to take care to do the backup, so it's more complicated. Your backup server space is, is not forever, so you need maybe some time offload to tape, but the tape can be not working, so your backup server can stop to work, and it's possible that you have another site. So you do a data guard for this environment, okay? And from that, if you follow the best practices, you need to do backup and you need to do a flow to tape. And maybe you have the cloud. So this is starting to be more and more complicated. And one day you have a network problem and your data guard stopped to work. What's happened? Your backup archive cannot be deleted because, because your policy depends to be need applied in the data guard. In the standby, so your you cannot execute any, any more the backup for your archives, and because of that, uh, your recovery area is full, so your database is stopped, and everything is stopped. So this is complicated. This is what can happen in real life. So the idea is uh, backup is not just copy and paste. In somewhere or safe is part of your environment. You need to be to be care. You need to take care about that because it's sometimes it's complicated. So you have two words for backup and high availability. By the way, uh, RPO recovery point objective that usually means how much or how much or what you can lose and recovery time objective usually means the time that you need to put everything running again. Uh, the goal in every environment is to have zero RPO and zero RTO. So you lose nothing. And if you have some problem, some downtime or whatever in your primary site or where you're running, you have a standby running that you can just switch and everything continues to work and without impact. This is the goals. But uh, how zero data loss can help with this? Uh, I will show to you some features, some information about zero data loss, what it, what it is, uh, some details, some features. Uh, I will show it to you now. So zero data loss is an engineering system. So it's based in exadata. So you have redundancy, you have uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you have infinite band, you have uh, switches, you have uh, storage, you have everything that Exadata is there, features for Exadata. So it's an engineering system based in Exadata. But since it's an engineering system, it's a hardware plus software. So you have a piece of software called Recover Appliance Library or Recover Appliance uh, Library uh, Zero Data Loss 
uh, to run there in this uh, engineering system. So you have something, you have one software running there. Uh, by the way, it is a, um, it can control your tape because you can put directly attached to tape. So it uses SAN and or screen backup to do that. It have uh, native replication, so you can have more than one zero data loss. I will explain later, but you can have more than one and is native replicated. So you can just enable and start to replicate from one to another. It contains a Airman catalog. So you your connect with your Airman is the same command that you execute. I will show later. It's the same command. So you have a, a catalog that is self management, self self managed by the recovery appliance library. I will show later too. Uh, and you control everything with enterprise manager, cloud control, or command line interface. But this is important. Zero data loss does not reduce RTO. It's just reduce recovery point objective. Because zero data loss is not a data guard. It's not uh, something that you put there and is if your primary have a failure, you switch and continue to run in uh, zero data loss. No, it's just for recovery point objective. Okay, for RTO, you need to use MAA, uh, data guard and other solutions. Okay, so basically, Zero Data Loss is a Oracle database. You have Oracle database running there with a Airman catalog. Is a Airman catalog database with a little modifications to cover some uh, recovery appliance library, some recovery appliance tables. Uh, in this database, you define the policies, uh, you register your database and everything related with the management for the environment. Uh, this database and this zero data loss have a, what is called a Delta store. Uh, that is where the data is stored, the, the backups that are in, ingest in the system. And this uh, have one feature that is called a Delta Push. Delta Push is the virtual backup and the real time redo. I will explain later, don't worry. Uh, and inside of this Delta store, you have automatic backup index, management, and validation. I will show later. But basically, everything that you put inside of zero data loss will be index, management, and automatic validation by the zero data loss. So if you backup uh, and have a black, a Corrupted block, zero data loss will inform you. If you're, uh, when I show later, when you create a new virtual backup, it will appear automatically for you. So you manage everything with DBMS RA package or your command line or in cloud control or enterprise manager. And to do the backups, your, you need to install one backup client library in each server that you want to do the backup. So, the main features that I can explain to you is the virtual full backup, real time redo, and uh, the replication support. So, uh, what is backup, virtual full backup, and what is this? That is the main feature for zero data loss that everyone is thinking, talk, talking about and whenever. So, it's an incremental for every strategy. This means that you execute just one incremental level one, incremental level zero, to fill the, the system with the information, fill the zero data loss with a copy for your database. So you have a level zero. And after that, you just execute level one backups. And the recovery appliance library will match the level one and level zero for you and generate for you a level zero, a full, a full backup. So this means that you execute just one uh, level zero and subsequent level one every day forever. You don't need to execute anymore a level zero backup and zero data loss will manage everything to show, to deliver to you a level zero backup. So you reduce a lot of throughput, uh, a lot of uh, the load of your 
system because if you have a database with 20, uh, 20, 25 terabytes and if you have an uh, incremental level one for just two gigabytes per day, so now you do a uh, one or two gigabytes per day incremental level one backup, and every day you have a 25 terabyte level zero available to you. And this backup, this virtual backup, is validated, is index, indexed, and you uh, cover about uh, failures from bad blocks or whatever. This is automatically validated by zero data loss. You do nothing. So the idea to stop and do a validation every two weeks from your backup, you don't need to do that because zero data loss two weeks automatically for you. And you don't need to put or uh, put more load in your environment because you don't need to restore this. Is our head our automatically uh, validated by zero data loss. So to do that, zero data loss index every data file that you made the backup and is different for the duplication. Because the duplication like uh, EMC data domain. EMC data domain made a uh, reverse engineer to enter behind to, to see the backup from uh, Airman. And I do a little representation. So imagine that you that you work as a librarian, and I go every day to you and deliver a box with book, books inside of that. Uh, you receive this box, this box, but you cannot open this box. You don't know what's inside of this box. If it's books or if it's just paper, you don't know. But what you can do, you can say based in the size, the Wait, whenever you choose, you can ignore and say and say, okay, I already have this table, I already have this box in my library, so I don't need any more. Whenever you choose. But this is the, the normal uh the duplication that a EMC do and other vendors execute. It does not open the box. With zero data loss, you can open this box. And check if you have this book or you don't have this book, the other book. So, Zero Data Loss can open the block that Airman sent to generate the backup set. So, uh, the idea is that Zero Data Loss can open the block that Airman sent to the tape library. So, this is the idea. And uh, what do you think that will be better? Someone that does not that can open the box, or someone that can uh, look the books that are inside of the box. What solution will be better for uh, backups? My opinion, zero data loss. So, what is real time redo? Uh, as you know, zero data loss means zero data loss in recovery appliance. The part of zero data loss came from this, this feature that is real time redo transport. Real time redo transport is a simple feature. Zero data loss can be a log archive desk destination for your database. It works like a data guard. Okay, you have the RFS that connect with the zero data loss whenever, but basically and it's just that. There is no more to explain. Zero data loss is a destination for your log archive test. It's just that. And with that, you can put in sync or async mode. But this means that your transaction just go to the database, just go to the, uh, how can I say, just go to the, just committed if it's synced or not synced with the archive logs or if the zero data loss. So, uh, and this is 100% is integrated and compatible with MAA. Uh, this means that you can use broker to control zero data loss, this feature for real time and you can disable using broker or not, or if you have standby, you can configure with broker. So this is 100% integrated with MAA. 
Uh, another feature is a replication. A replication can be in three ways of seeing data loss. You can have one master and one destination. It's the simple one way. You have the bidirectional. So both sides replay, uh, replicate to each other because you can have some databases that don't have data guard between the sites. So you, you have two sites, one zero data loss in each site, and they replicate each other. So you have two copies in everywhere. Or you can have two zero data loss replicated to another one who we spoke, that one to many or many to one, whenever, what you want to do. And this is important to say that every zero data loss in each side that you choose in the uh, the application can have different policies. So you can have the primary site where you run more databases. The policies can save the data for 20 days. But this is replicated to the standby uh, zero data loss. And the standby zero data loss, you can have 16, 60 days. So you can have one with more retention than other. So you can configure this. This is a simple uh, way to do. And you can have a tape and cloud. Uh, you can copy this to backups to cloud. Uh, to copy to cloud, you, you use uh, key vault. You can copy direct to, to tape uh, by our security backup. This is when you buy zero data loss, you can choose to have our security backup and link with tapes with ACN. Or you can use third part. Since the, this third part tape is compatible with Airman, you can uh, copy the, you can backup zero data loss to tape. Okay. Uh, and this is totally integrated with Airman catalog. I will show later. So the whole picture is that for zero data loss, you can have, uh, you can have your databases here. Doing the backup for one zero data loss that is replicated in a, a dedicated network to another zero data loss. And this one can be uh, linked with a tape in the same way that standby. So you have one network for management, one network to ingest the backup, one network to, uh, to client connections, and one, that, one dedicated for a replicated backup. So it's an engineer system. So uh, it's integrated with uh, MAA. So you have you can have a primary uh, replicated by zero data loss. So your database is run just in one site, and you can replicate to another site. You can uh, have uh, this is a single instance. Uh, the silver means that you have a hack can be in Exadata or whenever. You have local backup. This backup is replicated to another site. You can have the gold that you have uh, data guard with another site, and both sites have the backup, local backup. Uh, and you have the platinum that can you can have two. Uh, you have data guard in both sites, and these are backup. So it's integrated with Airman uh, with uh, MAA. So how you protect your database? So it's simple tasks that you define your catalog, you install the client, you register your database, you do the backup. It's a simple way how you, in the same way that you do for others backup, other vendors, it's the same way. You create the policies, you define the user that you connect, register the database, and do the backup. Simple like that. So the creation policy, is an important part for zero data loss. Because a good project for zero, not just for zero data loss, but a good uh, project for the backup is uh, a good policy definition. Because it is with the policy that you define the retention. So if your retention is 20 days, one month, one year, you define this by the policy. So if you start to mix some databases uh, with uh, different requirements in the same policy, you can have problems because for zero data loss, uh, it's zero data loss that defines and control the Airman recovery uh, window. So if you define inside of Airman 13 days or 
16 days, but inside of this data loss, you put your database with just in one policy with just 10 days of retention. After 10 days, probably these backups will be removed by the catalog automatic. So a good policy definition makes a good project for zero data loss because policy is a huge important. So how you define the policy? So I uh, made this example uh, with the command line just to show you. So to create the policy, you create the policy name. Here is zero data loss underscore webinar. You have the description. The storage location is Delta. Uh, because you can define when you install your zero data loss the name, but usually it's delta. And if you expand, you can be delta one, delta two, delta three. Recovery window can be one day, five days, whenever. So this is the recovery window that this policy covers. So if I put 10 days in here, zero data loss will enforce that these backups stay there for 10 days. Uh, you can define a max retention window. So because if you have space, zero data loss remains with your backup there. So between the retention window and max retention window, uh, you can choose this and you have a recreation, uh, recovery window for tape. So you can put in the local, inside of zero data loss that is in the disk, uh, you can put uh, two months and for recovery window standby, you can put five years. So you can have this. And this is automatically managed by zero data loss. Everything will be managed automatically by zero data loss. Backup uh, that was uh, needs to be deleted. Everything will be done automatically by zero data loss. You don't need to do nothing. Everything will be managed by zero data loss. So uh, after that, you created your VPC. What is VPC? VPC is Virtual Private Catalog User. So uh, this, this user is the Airman catalog user that you uh, put to connect in the Airman. Uh, so uh, to do that, you create using the uh, for zero data loss, you need to, to log in as root inside of zero data loss database server and execute REA CLI, recover price command line interface, add VPC user username. It will request the password and you create it automatically. Uh, you don't need to have more than one. Is you define this? I just put this as example. Uh, the important is that it will define the uh, catalog name, and is recommended to to create using uh, a to up, to have some problems if you create manually the user. Uh, how you register the database? So the first part you. Uh, Add the database, your database unique name that you have, your protection policy, and the space. So this database have the reserved space from backups at five gigabytes. So if my database have 10 terabytes, I put 10, 12 terabytes in here. I have some best practices to define the reserved space uh, because you need to have some space. Uh, there is not the exact size for your database. If your database have 10 terabytes, is uh, recommended to have to put this value 20% higher, 20, 25%. So you need to put something more there. So if your uh, database have 10 terabytes, you put 12, around 12 terabytes, 13 terabytes. So it's around 20%, 25%. So you register your database. And after you grant, you link your database with the username. You just, just go that. And if you want to move between catalogs, you just change the grant that you need to. You can change the catalog. To do the client configuration, you just library installation, configure the wallet, and the hash in your database. So you download the library from this node. You unzip in somewhere because it's just one file, library.so, and you copy this to uh, the lib folder for your Oracle Home. It supported HP, UX, uh, Linux, uh, Windows, uh, AX, and Z Linux. It supported for zero data loss. So you can have uh, 
uh, new engine, big engine inside of the end data loss without problem. Uh, you configure your wallet to, to the access you need to wallet to because uh, to not request the, 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 the username and password uh, when you execute. Uh, you do the, the credential, you create the credential. I usually recommend that you use with the credential name an easy connect. So when you do a list uh, credential, you can easily see where you are connecting with this credential. So I recommend to use easy connect to identify the here and with the username here, no problem. Uh, after that, you create your array file. So basically, it's, it's, it's just one file that points to the location of your wallet with the credential name that you are connecting. This is uh, needed for uh, your time redo and to Airman. So the pattern is goes to the folder DBS inside of Oracle Home and RHA instance name. So you see here as a, as example, you can see. And after that, you can go to the Airman connect with the catalog that is VPC user that I created before with the password and the connection can be a TNS connection or easy connection, no problem. And you register in your database in the same way that you do with a normal uh, Airman catalog. You just go there, register your database, and voila. After that, is a normal uh, channel configuration, SBT tape. You define the SBT tape library, like you do a HP data protector or uh, EMC networker. You define the library. You define some the wallet. Where is the wallet here? And the condition name that you are using. So you register that. You need to have the take that it can be SBT tape or tape. But the device tape is a tape. Device type is tape. The library location, okay. Uh, the credential uh, location, the RHA wallet location, where your wallet it is, and the credential name. This is the parameters. After that, you just execute a normal backup incremental level one, uh, and you can see that it uses library. And you, after that, you do a level one backup. I will show you that it is normal. If you do a list backup, you can see that you have a, I will show to you. You have a incremental level zero that I made before. Uh, and is that incremental with the checkpoint SCN and whatever. But now the magic start because look, the same backup. This is the list backup from the previous that I made here. Okay. Look that I made incremental level one. Okay. This took just two seconds, but look the tech. I have backup incremental level one. Okay. And look the checkpoint SCN and the checkpoint time for this backup. Okay. Is an incremental level one backup. Is it here and here? But look, what I have now, I have another backup set that is incremental level zero, level zero, with the same tag that my back previous backup. And if you look, I have the same checkpoint. So this backup, this backup, This one, this one was created by Zero Data Loss Library. And you can see the, here you have virtual backup information that is the same for everyone. But you have the virtual backup. This means that this backup is a virtual backup that is incremental level zero. And if you look here, it have the same of checkpoint for your incremental level one. This means that zero data loss merged this backup with this guy and generated to you this guy. 
And tomorrow, if I do the backup, it will match this guy with the new one, incremental level one, and goes further. So this is the idea from zero data loss. I'll show you with more details. So for replicated backup, it's the same idea. Uh, you have one backup set that can, you have one backup set, uh, one information for a replication and tape, it, a replication, the replication and tape backup is for backup set based. It's not virtual backup, it's a backup set based. So you have one backup set here that you have one copy that in this case is local. You have no media information, but it's a virtual backup is local, means that it's local. I have a second copy that is in the replicated environment, zero data loss replicated. Is means that is another site. Uh, I have a different backup piece uh, key, but is the same backup set, so it's the same file. And this one is copy in the tape uh, two. So I have this copy in another place that is a tape. Uh, I can have the same. I remember that I told you that. Uh, Geo data loss manage automatically the airman. So if my primary site have policy for retention as 20 days and my third site have uh, two years or have uh, six months of retention, auto airman Geo data loss automatically delete the backup from the primary site, but you still have copies. So you can have one copy in the tape. You can have one copy in the tape like here. Is in the tape, is the media, pick up piece name, or and you can still have the copy replicated. But after some time, after one year, whenever, you can have the backup just in the tape. And this management for the Airman catalog is automatically executed by Zero Data Loss. You don't do nothing. You don't need to do uh, a resync catalog. You don't need to do a uh, verify backup. You don't need to do nothing. You don't need to do a cross check for your backup. This is automatically executed by zero data loss library. So, but how does this work internally? How is this managed automatically? So, zero data loss, as I told, is an engineering system. And inside of this database, you have two main uh, table spaces. The catalog that is stored in the Airman catalog tables and Zero data loss metadata tables and the Delta disk group. Delta disk group don't have the backup set stored as is Airman executed. Uh, it's, it's stored the information side on some files. That is the com files. You can see if you are Delta uh, database name containers. So you have the containers name here just for information. You don't need to check these every day. This is automatically managed by Zero data loss. This is just information to you. To show you, uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it's a normal Airman catalog. So you have all the RC underscore tables, RC database, RC backup set, RC backup piece. You have the DB, BS, DF uh, tables. Everything is there. Everything as a normal Airman catalog is there. You have some internal tables for RACs, the cover appliance. Sys user is RHA database. You have a lot of tables. Just is just some examples. RHA database is information about zero data loss. Uh, database that is there. Config some. Uh, you can have some uh, network chunk size uh, tasks. RHA tasks. Virtual backup data file is table that uh, lists all the virtual backups. So is there. You have some plans and plans details. This means the index backup. I'll show you later with more details. These three tables: plans, plans details, and blocks. This means the index backup from there. So, what is index backup? Index backup is the task that is executed for every backup that you ingest in your zero data loss. Everything that is put inside of zero data loss will be indexed. So, this means that Library will copy, will check uh, your backup, will check against, check block by block. 
because we open the Airman backup set and see the Datafile backup, Datafile blocks that are inside, and generated virtual backup. So you have two phases that is fix up another and key restore fast. So it's just two main tasks that are there. Just information. You don't need to follow this, but if you go inside of database, you can see these tasks, the task index backup and honey, and you can have these two phases. Uh, and is that. But one example. So look here. I made a backup uh, incremental level one from data file uh, five. Okay. This one, file five, level zero, I have the backup piece 2730. Okay. If I go in the RC database uh, table inside of zero data loss database, I can see the database key and the database incremental key. If I go to the data file that is uh, uh, from Airman catalog, I can have the data file key. Okay. <coughs> so uh, I have the this backup. And if I go to the virtual backup data file, because if you look here, I have a virtual backup here, 2728 here, information. This is important to you. So I have one virtual backup linked with this data file. Okay. So I have the virtual backup 2728 virtual backup. And I have one play that is one index, one plan linked with this guy. Okay. And I have the details from this plan. What this table is, what is the index, and what is where is the difference for zero data loss? Where is zero data loss is uh, doing the master? So if you go to the plans and what is the index? Why is different? Why zero data loss can see block by block because it's open the blocks and say that for this virtual backup key, from the block zero until block one, because here this one is stored in the chunk that I showed to you in the beginning, chunk one. From the block number two, because zero to one, one, so two, the, from the block number two until the block 17 is stored in chunk one and the last block here. So this is uh, how you read this. So this means that everything was in the index by zero data loss and put in the container. Okay, uh, but if I do an incremental, a new backup incremental level one, how does this work? How the index backup and virtual backup will be done? So I made incremental level one, and you can see in the virtual backup data file from the same, I have two backups, two virtual backups, the previous one and the new one, 2728. Okay, and I have two plans. And it's important to know, to show the, how, what is happening. So if I go to the uh, 2768, that is the second backup that I made here, key, I know that from the block number zero plus one, I'm storing in this chunk. But if I go to the block number four plus four, this means two eight, I'm storing the chunk number one. So this means that my incremental backup that does not copy these guys, just to copy here. So my incremental backup, my incremental backup don't have these blocks. What's happen? When I when zero data loss needs to recover this guy, this virtual backup, it will start to copy this guy from this for whom this uh, chunk, block one, zero, block one, block two, block three, but when it's to block to recover block four, where it goes? It goes to the chunk number one. So this is the index backup. This is how zero that loss work internally. This is how the index backup work internally. So this is how zero that loss is working internally. Repeating. Uh, if I continue to do the backup, you will start to see more and more information. You can see that 
some backup, and this is a, is a feature for your data loss, you have the automat automated delta pool space management. This means that zero data loss will delete backups, will delete blocks that is duplicated. Okay? So after some times, uh, you can see that uh, if you look here, if you look here, look the same, the same that I have before, 2728. Now, the block number zero is in the chunk 1025. Okay? And is the so this means what this means that you have a delta pool optimization. You reduce zero data loss and reduce to you the space management, and reduce to you space usage for backup. So you always have a good space usage for your zero data loss. Uh, and what this means? This means this. If I want to recover now. Uh, the this backup set, this virtual backup to seven to eight, I will pick up the block from the chunk to seven to six. These guys, I will pick up this from this chunk and this from the other chunk. So and this for every backup that I made. So this is how the index. This is a picture for one index internal details. So. Uh, So basically, every every data file block that enter in the zero data loss is indexed and stored to create a virtual full backup. Basically, the idea is that you don't have stored inside of zero data loss the backup set. You have a mat matrix that pointers to blocks. So you don't have one file that represents one to one to backup set. You have one container file that have blocks inside, and you have one pointer, one table, that is one matrix, that points to the blocks. Okay, this is how zero that does work internally. It's just a, a, a small review, but this, uh, to present to you how this work. Uh, I covered just part of zero data loss, so you have a lot of information and you have a lot of things. If you want to follow, if you want to check more information, you can follow in my blog that I put more information there. I put more details on how to you protect your databases, how you enroll your database with full details are there, how the virtual backup and incremental uh, forever strategy works is there. You can check with more details. The same for the index backup, how the index backup test course, uh, how it's happening. Uh, the virtual backup with more and more details you can have there. You can have how you can check how to do a, a backup. Uh, you have zero RPO to your to your tables to to your database. Uh, you can you can see how to do a, a protection for your primary. Uh, and uh, for your standby, and how you have uh, your primary and standby with zero RPO. So you have all the information there, how to integrate it with uh, data guard and whenever everything is covered there, you can see with more details. So uh, now uh, we will. We, uh, we will share. Uh, we we have the questions. If you have some questions, since it's alive inside of Facebook, if you have more, you you we will stop for some two or three minutes until uh, sync everyone. So uh, we will stop now and wait all the questions. And is that? And we we will. Be there. Okay, Simon. Thank you very much uh, for your present uh, for presentation. Uh, I have, I believe, that two questions. Uh, it's possible you see. 
Yes, uh, I'm checking. Uh, the first question is uh, if the recovery appliance have just one database or is uh, one database per database begin backup? No, so you need to have just one database inside. Is your your when you install your Zion data loss, you create one database, and this database have everything inside. So is inside of Zion data loss, you have just one database. Uh, <coughs> you don't uh, need to control this database. Uh, means you don't need since it's run inside of Exadata engineer system. You don't need to control the smart scan whenever. You don't manage this database. It's always there. You don't need to create uh, special users or something like that. It's self-managed by Zion Data Loss itself. So it's just one database runs for these uh, appliance. Uh, the another question is, is virtual full backup information read from virtual Airman catalog or from Quantum 5? Uh, it's for it's read from Airman catalog. Because <coughs> uh, it check inside of uh, Airman because this data loss I have an Airman catalog uh, there. So all uh, the information are inside of zero data loss database and inside of this Airman catalog. So everything is managed automatically by zero data loss uh, library. So can it happen that one day you do a list backup? And you are executing. Uh, you do the backup whenever you do a list backup, and you have one backup. You can do five minutes later. You can do another list backup, and the backup disappears because it was uh, expired or something like that. So this is automatically managed by uh, uh, zero data loss uh, library. So it this means that. Your relies over a Airman catalog and zero data loss relies over this. So everything is, is there. Uh, another question. I'm just checking. Uh, this is an interesting point because uh, how you do, uh, because the question is uh, how in the Cost perspective, how much rate in you compare with the other backup system? I will do a simple example. How it is your backup policy today? Uh, I mean, you have uh, one uh, full every week and incremental every day. And if you need to restore, you do the backup uh, Saturday night. But you are in Wednesday and you need to recover your database. What you need to do? You need to recover the full backup and uh, the last incremental, if it's uh, cumulative or no, or maybe every day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Wednesday, and plus the archive log. So, uh, but if you do this every month, you, you need to have four uh, backups full backups for one for one every week. So in a traditional environment, you need to do a several backups, full backups for your database. But if you have a huge database with terabytes of database, 20, 25, 13 terabytes, you do this every weekend. You have window to do that. Uh, remember what I post in the beginning? You have your backup server that is shared with uh, file system, backups, uh, you have tapes, but your tape can fail. So, but you do this every week because you need to do the backup. So you pass 10 hours doing the backup because your database, I have eight terabytes as example, just one example. Uh, so you pass 10 hours doing this backup. In the traditional environment, but for zero data loss, you made the initial full backup, and you do the incremental every day. And the incremental is one gigabyte. So, 
what is it is difficult to compare because as I showed to you, the unit allows generate to you an incremental level zero. So how you compare to do 10 hours of backup with one hour with 10 minutes of backup? And at the end of 10 minutes and the end of 10 hours, you have the same result. Because at, at the end of this period, you have a full backup. So how you compare this? How much time you save? How much, it's not just time, how much load of your system you reduce? So it's difficult to compare. But this is the idea. You are comparing 10 hours of the backup with just 10 minutes. And at the end of the 10 minutes, you have the same result as 10 hours. So uh, the cost uh, needs to put everything in, in the papers, everything in the table, and check uh, where you, you have the information. But uh, this is uh, how you compare. Uh, I'm checking a new question here. Yes, uh, the one, I believe that you, one, the same guy, uh, three questions, uh, the same guy. It's mm -hmm. No, no, no problem. I'm checking here, just a moment. I'm, I'm reading. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, when you do a level one backup, it's always generate a level zero backup. It's automatically executed by uh, zero data loss. You don't, I don't remember if it's possible to counter it, but I don't think that is possible. I don't remember because it's a feature. So why are you disable this? But, uh, it's automatic. So every backup incremental level one generate an incremental level zero is automatically for you. Uh, other, what did you? Uh, one detail that is important, zero data loss does not recover your backup, okay? Zero data loss <coughs> store your backup, open and do the validation, everything, but does not, because if you have your backups plus the archive logs, you can uh, usually you can uh, think that you can apply the logs, the blocks that are inside of the archive logs, inside of the backups and do this automatically. No, zero data loss does not merge backups with archive logs. You still continue to do uh, backup and backup of archive logs, okay? Zero data loss does not merge backup from data files with backup of archive logs. Genet loss merge to generate the virtual backup, just backup incremental level one with incremental level zero and uh, virtual backups, okay? Uh, just from data files. It does not merge backup from data files, virtual whenever, with backup from archive logs. So the merge between both does not occur, okay? But what's happened is that if you are using a real time redo, that you have your backup and the real time redo that zero data loss is a destination for your archive logs. So if you have a corruption in your environment, yours, I will return to, to, to show one example, just a moment. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Just to show you. In this environment, okay? Uh, pick up just one example here. So, uh, where it is, my pen is here. So, if I'm here, I'm running in this site, okay? I'm running here, okay? And uh, I have my environment here, and this environment, and here I have a uh, here, uh, time redo enable. So, the archives, the archives are coming here to here, okay? But <coughs> if I have a problem here, my uh, site uh, have a outage or whatever, if I lose this guy, OK? 
okay? And I need to recover this one. What I will, I will have here? I will have, I will have RPO zero because I have the incremental and the virtual backup here. That is a full backup. I have here. And I have the archive logs until the failure because the recover time objective, uh, recover time, uh, real time redo is uh, synced inside of zero data loss. So if I lose this guy, whenever, or even here, if I if I follow if sorry if I if I lose this guy, if I lose this guy, and I need to recover this. I can pick up the backup from here, and I can pick up the archive log with a replicate with a zero RPO because everything will be replicated inside of zero data loss, the backup and the archive logs. So you have zero RPO, and I will add that if you have replicated and if you lose this site, you have everything in the second site. Okay. This is the the idea. Uh, I don't know if I answered the question correctly, but uh, you can you can send me an email with more information. You can go to the my my blog and see more information there. My my spo my posts uh, will uh, continue to be published in uh, the looks Oracle User Group website. Will be there. Will be in my website, my blog. Uh, my Twitter, my LinkedIn, you can find the information there that I put I put at the end. I put the end uh, information. You can follow here, you can check uh, some more examples. I have more details there and everything there. So you have more information there. Okay, Simon. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I believe that it's an excellent presentation. And, uh, thank you. Uh, in the next time, uh, you'll see. Uh, thank you very much for the audience and uh, see you in the next webinar. Thank you. Yes, uh, just uh, uh, just to to okay to 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 share that was a pleasure to 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 share this information. Is I think that is important. And we are planning to do another webinar soon that I will cover uh, the uh, replication environment and MAA integration between zero data loss and data garden whenever. We are planning to do this as soon as possible. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, send you uh, in the next webinar. Okay, thank you guys. Bye-bye.